In this video, we investigate why we can't do all of our astronomy from space. So we are in your library, mm -hmm. and I thought that it would be fitting to ask you a question that I get a lot on my page, which is people wondering if, you know, we can attach telescopes to the Starlink satellites to kind of mitigate some of the issues that astronomers will inevitably face with the number of satellites in low Earth orbit. So why is that not so feasible? Right. I mean, I, I get this question all the time, right? It's, it's yeah, just put take your telescopes from the ground, old fashioned, and, and put them in space and, you know, Elon can do it for you or something like that. And, you know, it's just not feasible. Why? Mostly because um, there are thousands of professional astro astronomical telescopes on Earth that are all slightly different, uh, optimized to do different things, uh, narrow fields of view, wide fields of view, optical, infrared, spectroscopy, all these different techniques. And so turning each of those into a space telescope every time it's a major design effort and right. automating it Right. right so that so that it can actually operate in space on its own instead of you know some poor guy going up the mountain every day <laughs> and kind of filling the dewer and 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 adjusting things and so on you know that's not a trivial thing right uh even if you did that even you know it, it sort of freezes you into a design more, much more than if it's on the ground it's not like we haven't tried to build them cheaply in the past right. uh, particularly in the small explorer program uh, where we've tried to do modest space experiments with telescopes um, they're still an awful lot more expensive than ground-based telescopes by you know factor of 100 or something mm -hmm. if you think about the big end telescopes like the 30 meter telescopes we're building now i'm sorry even starship can't lo launch those yeah. uh it's just not gonna happen if you really want to take all of ground-based astronomy just optical astronomy never mind radio astronomy just take optical astronomy and move it all into space you're not talking billions you're talking trillions even if the launch cost was zero, right? Elon launches them for free or something, right? But it's not, it's, it's built, designing right. and building and operating uh, space observatories like that. It's just, it's not like launching another Earth observing satellite, unfortunately. It's wow. just a little trickier. That's what I was, my next question, well, what if Elon, you know, steps up and, and helps out funding it? It's just so expensive. It's just too expensive. It's impractical right now, this generation. Another generation from now, another 30 years, yeah, I think maybe. the answer will be different. Okay. But it'll have to be, we'll be forced to. Uh, but but we may just have, you know, a more modest astronomy research program because right. we won't be able to afford as many telescopes if they're all in space. I feel like some people say, well, why don't we do it on the moon? Yeah, the moon's even worse. I actually did back in, in the early 90s, I did a study when I was at NASA uh, of a lunar telescope. And you know, it turns out despite all the science fiction stories, the moon is kind of a sucky place to put an optical telescope at least, because every 14 days, it's super hot. And then for 14 days, it's super cold. And so you're thermal cycling this this telescope, and that's something telescopes don't like. Uh, they're these extreme swings of, of, of heat and cold. And then also there's dust. And it turns out one of the things we hadn't appreciated until relatively recently, when a rocket lands or takes off on the moon it kicks up dust that actually goes because there's no atmosphere to slow it down and because there's so little gravity those dust particles cover like most of the moon wow. right they they can they can uh, end up thousands of miles from where uh, where the, the the rocket was and so you're gonna have horrible problems with keeping the optics clean Wow. Um, and so for this and other reasons uh, um, and also, you know, I, I think we can see the time in the not too distant future where the moon is not that empty a place for, uh, for space travel, right? And, and you'll have the same problems on the moon as you do on, on, on Earth. Um, certainly for radio telescopes, one of the, one of the things that does work on the moon is if you put a big radio telescope on the lunar far side where the bulk of the moon is shielding you from the radio interference from Earth. But that only works as long as we don't have, you know, hundreds of satellites in lunar orbit <laughs> putting, doing their own radio transmissions locally. And that's going to happen awful soon, I think. So it turns out that the best way to do astronomy in space, if you're going to be in space, is not to be in the moon, not even to be in low Earth orbit, 
but to be in a place called Sun Earth L2, mm. the second Lagrange point, which is a million miles towards midnight. Wow. If you set your space probe beyond the Earth in the direction away from the Sun, about a million miles, as it orbits the Sun, the Earth just tugs on it a little bit uh, to keep it perfectly in sync with the Earth. Uh, and so it orbits, it orbits the, uh, it goes around the sun the same rate as the Earth, but a million miles further out. And the Earth and the sun are in the same direction behind it. It can have its solar panels looking that way and its telescope looking out into a really nice dark sky, well beyond all the starlings and all the, uh, all the stuff in Earth orbit. We have a couple of telescopes there. There's an amazing one called Gaia that the Europeans launched oh, okay. that's mapping the positions and distances of a billion stars. We're planning to launch the James Webb there yep. later this year. Uh, there's another telescope called Euclid that, that's going there uh, in the near future. Uh, and there's two or three others that are already out there uh, uh, observing. And so, uh, uh, L2 is, is the hot place to be if you're an astronomy satellite, but it needs a big rocket to get there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for clicking on it and watching it if you've made it through to the end. Congratulations. Please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll be bringing you more content very soon and I appreciate all of your support.